Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's time to go to Sonny the Paddock Judge, who always has an interesting segment, always has interesting little ditties to talk about. And today, Sonny delves headfirst into the whip. Let's watch. Thanks, guys. Today, we're going to take a look at the use of the whip. I'm here with Tony Morgan, who has well over 12,000 wins in his career. He's going to explain the use of the whip. Tony, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. We urge the horses with it. We try to trick them into going. Uh, it's really uh, more of a coaxing device than it is uh, a brutal weapon, as some people portray it. It's not uh, that way at all. The whips we use now uh, have, have uh, migrated from a heavy leather instrument to a small, thin, very light uh, fiberglass rod and uh, has linen on the outside of it. It uh, has a snapper on the end that makes noise and that's pretty much the effect of it. Uh, makes a lot of noise, uh, gets some bad PR at times. I think the uh, impression is that some drivers use it too much. Uh, but I think as you see, the better drivers don't use it near as much as the drivers that aren't as successful. So. Uh, since we all try to win races, I think we try to mirror ourselves after the guys that win. So uh, that's pretty much it. We don't. Uh, we try to use it as little as possible, and and uh, if you use it too much, the horse resents it, and they pull up and don't go. So, and we do have some strict rules here on abusive use of the whip. Is that not correct? Yeah, we we have to follow rules. We're not allowed to hit a horse one-handed before the three-quarter pole. Uh, any indiscriminate or excessive use of the whip causes us to get fined. Uh, they fine us pretty regular if we abuse it at all and uh, we really don't have much problem here. I don't think there's much abuse at all. If you look at the whipping fines, they haven't been uh, very excessive at all. They're very rare here and uh, I think that's the way it is. At the better tracks, you don't see it hardly at all and at the lesser tracks, you see it more prevalent. Thanks, Tony. And that's it from here. I'm Sonny the Paddock Judge, and I approve this message. Back to you guys. Very interesting segment by Sonny the Paddock Judge, and now I know the proper use of a whip. Because before I was like a royal rookie, but now I got my, my act together with the whip situation. We're going to head to um, Pennsylvania Sire Stakes action. There I were think five divisions. Uh, five divisions here at Harris Chester. $200,000 pluses and purses in the first. Even better odds went off as a prohibitive one to five favorite with John Campbell with our Rail Fantasy and Tim Tietrich, the three to one second choice. Well, our Rail Fantasy broke and that made it a walk in the park for the favorite, even better odds, who scored by five in 159 and four. Salutation Hanover went off the overwhelming favorite and with good reason. And this is looking actually at the fifth race on that day. The son of Andover Hall uh, won easily in 157 and 4 with a first up move, pulling away from the field by over four lengths. Driven by Dave Pallone and trained by Mickey Burke, uh, this was the fastest of the five sire stakes division. Hmm. Uh, Earl H was second and Y Dat showed up for third. In the third division, copycat with Steve Smith was the seven to five choice, a slight favorite over Broadway Bistro and Dave Pallone. And while the two favorites acted like it was a match race, Braggart, an 11 to 1 shot with Tony Morgan, pulled first over and won by a couple of lengths in 158 and 3. Now in this eighth race, there were a couple of these sophomore trotters that were a little, uh, I don't know, acting, um, I don't want to say bad. Precocious? What's the word? Precocious, maybe? <laughs> They're going off stride? Is that another word for it? Okay. Breaking uh, hearts. <laughs> breaking hearts. <laughs> okay, and it was uh, NF Quotable, who was part of the first quarter, finds a spot on the pylons, comes back with no cover to win in 159 and 1 by over three lengths, and he was driven by Tim Curtin, trained by Sam Beagle. KT Dixie player was second. Bustin' Stones was third. <laughs> In the final division, a short field of only six starters went postward. Citation Lady with Ray Schnitger of Dewey, Cheatham, and Hal Fame in the bike, the 7-5 to five favorite. Knox Trot Hall with Dave Pallone, the 2-1 to one second choice. But Citation Lady established clear superiority early and jogged by three open lengths in 158 and 2. When we come back, it's time to go to the whip. We'll go around the oval, and this week the big feature event is the 54th edition of the Kane Pace. The final took pace, place rather, at Freehold Raceway, and it was a barn burner. When we come back, stay with us. Rob is the rabbit's foot, because everyone feels a little luckier when he's around. And that's why he's a part of your group. Everyone plays a part at Harris. 
Only 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia airport. This is where it begins. Here's where it ends. Ron Pierce surging him on. It's Donato Hanover. It's the Donato Tonian. Hanover Shoe Farms, the greatest name in harness racing.